Oh, it's the oldest story in the book. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy kicks open the closet door and finally meets Mr. Wright. <laughs> I don't know. Hi, I'm Kimberly Marin and I'm here with the fan carpet. I'm at the Apollo Theatre in London for the gala screening of Any Day Now. I'm going to speak to Alan Cumming and Travis Fine to see what they have to say about the film. Enjoy! Incredible film, such a touching story. Um, could you tell us a little bit about it? Other uh, story? Yes. Uh, it's about two gay guys in the 70s in, in Los Angeles who basically kind of meet very and very quickly are in a relationship and very quickly take in this little boy who's abandoned, a little boy with Down syndrome and they decide they're going to try and adopt him and it's about their struggle. They have this lovely, lovely life and lovely family unit and then all goes prejudice and bigotry loom and they, you know, they lose him and it's about them trying to win him back. The script originally made its way to me from PJ Bloom, my music supervisor. His father had actually written the script about 30 years ago. He knew I was looking for a script and he said, my father's got the script, it almost got made a number of times, so let me send it to you. And I immediately sensed um, this character Rudy and this young boy, because there, there was no Paul character in the original script. I, I love the love story between these two, these sort of two very, very unlikely people coming together. I love the idea of doing a 70s period piece, it's one of my favorite eras of cinema, you know, sort of gritty 70s drama. So I said, let's see if we can do a 70s era drama on modern technology, red camera, and update. And so, um, so I was thrilled. George let me sort of take his script and remold it, and, and, and off we went. So, so privileged that other people are going to get to see this story and just obviously kind of understand what you know what it took to, to get through that. You know, because of what our family went through to get to where we are today, we took one look at the script and said we've got to be involved in this film. That's really what happened. We yeah. read the script and it was like it's a story it had, that has to be story told. that had to be made and told and. So we put as much backing and our experience behind it as we could. Yeah. And it's going to affect a lot of people in a very positive way. I, I yes. think it will. It's a very, it's a very moving film. Um, everyone takes away a, a little something different from ever, all, everyone that yeah. I've spoken to. It's, yeah. it's, it, everyone has a different reaction, which is a great that's thing. Always it's a, that's when it's, that's when it's a good film. Yeah, and and it's very powerful. And it's a film you speak about three days later. So awesome. it's like reading that good book, and you're like, wow, I'm, I'm still thinking about it. So, yeah. Lovely. Garrett uh, Delahunty, he's my boyfriend. He's uh, amazing. Really lovely guy and a great actor. And it was so easy to, you know, we just really liked each other. And, you know, all of a sudden after knowing someone for two days, you're kind of, you know, making out with them and doing these big emotional scenes. And it was really easy. We both just felt really comfortable with each other. You've been friends with Alan for a long time. Yeah. What makes him such an extraordinary performer? Uh, I don't know. You just answered it. He's an extraordinary performer. I, I was at the Fringe Club when I was 18 or 19, and I went out after our show to a place where all the performers gathered. And, the, and I saw this old couple, this very, very camp old couple, get up and entertain maybe 500 people. And they were... They were in their 60s, maybe, in silk dressing gowns, and it was kind of slightly tragic, but hilarious. And it turns out that it was Alan, age 17, it was the first performance of Vic and Barry, who became legends in Scotland. And uh, we, I, I couldn't quite believe that I met him socially soon afterwards, because I was a huge fan of the couple of years before I met him. We've been friendly for about 200 years now, and um, he just has that thing. He has that thing where you can't take your eyes off him when the camera's rolling when he's on stage. In real life, of course, he's normal, but, you know, but uh, he's an extraordinary... He knows how to share his thoughts with an audience in an extraordinary way. Yeah, Isaac, the little boy with Down syndrome, was just like a dream. He was just, you know, we all just fell in love with him. He was just like a big light change. Do you to Alan as, a, as an actor for, for his character? He should pop over my shoulder right now and say, because I'm brilliant, because I'm the great Alan coming. Um, oh, I uh, I was talking to Alan's agent, and he brought Alan's name up. And as soon as he brought his name up, as a director, you sort of you know you kind of envision the actors that are talked about. As soon as he said Alan Cumming, I said that's the guy. Of course. I mean, you know, I had seen his stuff from Cabaret. I'd seen his stuff on film, and I thought how perfect. Uh, and thankfully, Alan, I had a relationship with Alan's manager. She got him the script very quickly, and he he signed on long before there was a. You know, you say you start a parade, and you trust that all the floats and everything will be there by the time he signed on long before the parade was was ready to go, and and really was a a, a, a real help in, in in getting the parade going. So. Really want to do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, wanted him and 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 also he's um, you know he's wonderful because actors want to work with guys like him. You know, I mean it's that that part's wonderful. So so calling other actors and saying, hey, do you want to come do this? They say, who's in it? They say Alan. And they go, of course. What drew you to this particular role? I just really the sense of injustice in the in the in the script, the idea that this could happen and that these people who. <clears throat> They did this beautiful life and made this great safe home environment for this wee boy. For that to be taken away for really ugly reasons, I just find that so... It just maddened me and I just wanted to tell a story like that to remind people that even though great strides are made in, in terms of gay rights and equality, that there's really prejudice and bigotry still exist and we must not be complacent. And obviously like to know what you're a fan of. It can be anything in the world. Louis C.K. Oh, sorry. Tennis. Chocolate. Um, sweating. Chinese food. Turning left on an aeroplane. You know, a bunch of stuff. I'm a big fan of um, spicy beans. I believe in us, and I believe no matter what, we have right on our side. I like happy ending. Hmm? Don't we all, sweetheart?